I'm joined now by Dr. John Brownstein, Chief Innovation Officer at Boston Children's Hospital and an ABC News contributor. Thanks for being here, doctor. Now, we've heard the word breakthrough a lot today about this new treatment from Merck. If the data holds up, just how significant could this be to have an oral pill that helps fight COVID? Yeah, thanks, Andrew. I actually think this is a huge advance in our fight to counter COVID. Take a pill for five days and reduce your chances of hospitalization. You know, what Merck found is essentially hospitalizations were cut by 50% in high-risk individuals, older or obese or those with cardiovascular disease. And that was true for across all variants, including Delta. And we know that these antivirals have worked for other diseases. And so we're seeing this, you know, being applied to COVID. And the fact is that this trial was stopped early because it was deemed unethical to proceed because of the amazing impact that this drug could have. So, you know, there's a lot to think about here in terms of its rollout. You know, you need to implement this drug within five days of symptom onset. Um, but the, the idea is if you can get this drug to people, it will make a really big impact in our battle against COVID. And we know there are still billions of people around the world who have yet to get any vaccine. So what could this pill mean globally for containing the pandemic and for addressing some of those inequity issues that we've seen around the world treating and preventing COVID? You know, I think it could be a game changer. You know, Merck expects to produce millions of doses. And, you know, I think this will mean, you know, broader access. We do have to consider pricing here in the U.S. You know, the vaccine itself is about $39. The treatment is about $700. So we do have to be concerned about affordability and accessibility to everyone here in this country. But I do think, you know, Merck is uh, signing agreements with other countries and thinking about pricing that is tiered to make sure that this drug is more accessible across the globe. And that's great. And, you know, you know, drug is interesting because it's easier to manufacture, store, and access than vaccines. But I do have to point out the vaccines are still our weapon against this pandemic, and we have to keep focusing on vaccine equity and accessibility. But, you know, this drug is incredibly exciting. Which leads to my next question, because here in the U.S., we're still experiencing vaccine hesitancy. Is there a concern that those that are still resisting getting vaccinated might just say, hey, if there's a pill that can cut hospitalizations and deaths in half, why do they need to get the shot? You know, it's a really good question, and it's one that I'm concerned about, this issue that, you know, this drug will undermine the vaccine rollout and lead to hesitancy. You know, we have tens of millions of people in that wait-and-see category, or they're just choosing not to get the vaccine. But we have to remind people, it's not an either-or. We do not want to put people in harm's way with this virus. You know, we have severe illness, death, and long COVID. So it's not a choice. It's, you know, the vaccine is there and will help reduce your risk, but also the risk for the community. But at the same time, this pill will be there as a safety net for those that are potentially high risk and are vulnerable. We need to focus on the upstream impacts of this virus. Yes, downstream is important, but you know, we should be thinking about these in tandem and not you know, as a choice between two products. Finally, the FDA today announced some key meetings of its advisory panel for the month of October. Just outline the importance of those meetings for potential approval of maybe more booster shots and for vaccines for children between ages five and 11. Yeah, the FDA is going to have a very busy October. Uh, we, of course, you know, a number, millions of people that have had the Moderna vaccine or J&J &J are waiting to see about boosters. And so on October 14th, they'll be looking at Moderna booster potential. Uh, on October 15th, they'll be looking at the one-dose J&J shot and whether that needs a booster. I think likely we'll see, you know, authorizations there. There's going to be studies around mixing and matching. A lot of questions about whether you had one vaccine, can you take the other? And I think the biggest, you know, question is going to be on October 26th, the meeting around that vaccine for five to 11 year olds. And, you know, this is exciting because, you know, the FDA is already thinking about meeting even ahead of the submission of data by Pfizer. So, you know, this idea that you could get potential, you know, authorization ahead of Halloween is feasible. I think likely it could still take weeks. And remember, this is an advisory group that then, you know, has to go to the FDA to approve it and then CDC to, to really refine recommendations. So it could take a few weeks after that October 26, but, you know, it's really exciting that, you know, potentially end of October or into November, we'll see shots in the arms of younger kids and get that protection that we've all been waiting for. Of course, we have to see the data and the FDA has to take its time. But again, all very exciting developments that might take place in the month of October. OK, we'll just have to wait and see. Thank you, Dr. Brownstein. Thanks so much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.